Hey everybody, Will here at Tom Cruise Studios Live Music in Austin for episode number four of Three Beers and Whiskey featuring George Von Doom. Here's beer number one. Hey everybody, Will here with Three Beers and Whiskey. Tonight I have special guests with me sitting in the seat. I have George Von Doom. So we're going to go ahead and uh, crack down on three beers, uh, have a whiskey, and uh, just have some conversation, topic, talk. See what happens uh, over the course of three beers and a whiskey. So, thank you very much, G. I appreciate you uh, showing up, coming out here tonight uh, on a nasty Austin traffic night. <laughs> um, First of all, let's have a moment of silence for the traffic. <laughs> That's dead. Like, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And I appreciate being invited out. All that good stuff. Yeah. No. Thank you. Um, and for everybody, uh, a little bit of uh, history background. Um, George Von Doom uh, also is the president or the proprietor for the Austin Hip Hop Awards. Yeah. I actually got, uh, going back up here behind him, got a poster from this past year's awards. This so, right yeah. <laughs> so, um, and that's, that's not really how I jumped in and I met Von Doom, but uh, it, it was a meeting at a show and afterwards. Uh, on some, uh, I think it was a blog I wrote up, and I ran into you working the door at a, a at Spinners. Spinners, yeah. and uh, and it was like, hey, did you ever see this? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, nah, okay, uh, you did a write up about me. Appreciate it. Let me read it real quick. And it was very honest, and I appreciate honesty. Man, I'll tell you, you what. Could tell it wasn't a reach. It was it was straight from the heart, and I appreciated that a thousand percent. Well, that's you know, as far as how live music in Austin, how we do that, that that's the only way I actually would think it would ever be worthwhile to anybody reading it to know about some of the local live music scene, whether it's rap, hip hop, rock, whatever. And um, and so yeah, it was, it was nice meeting you, and then. You know, when you, you know, contacted me back and was like, hey, thanks for that, and then invited me to come to one of your shows afterwards, mm -hmm. super badass. What, what's Von Doom got for Austin? You got anything right on the board? Now, right now, I'm just focusing on um, finishing the King Doom album. I do have a video that is being shot by uh, Eric Sadler that's coming up. Um, that will be released on Halloween the same time as... Uh, the King Doom album that will be released. Halloween of this year? Of this year. So wait, you got a new album you're dropping. Correct. Got a video on Halloween that's going to come out. Correct. And then, uh, yeah, because you got YouTube over here, we got Facebook over here. Both of y'all. <laughs> um, and is this just all Von Doom, or you got, because... There's a couple the, the Alter Ego is yeah. the most recent. That was with TPT. Correct. I mean, yeah. and that was that was labeled Von Doom and TPT. Alter yeah, Ego. that that one's labeled Von Doom and TPT because okay. it's a joint album. This mm -hmm. is this is gonna be straight. This, it, there's Von gonna Doom. be features, but it's gonna be straight Von Doom. Nice. Um, okay. I, I, I have some stuff I'm working on with um, a couple of couple of guys. Um, I they're famous to me. They're battle rappers. Oh, okay. So it's um, um, uh, Matt Anybody? Hoffa and okay. um, Chilla Jones. I'm working with some stuff with them. Um, we just got to get everything finished with that and then go from there. So is the uh, Kingdom, is it King, King Doom? It's it's a play on words, Kingdom and King Doom both. So mm -hmm. the way it's going to be spelled is K-I-N-G-D-O and then it's, uh what is it? Parentheses, parentheses and with O, o and then Nice. And then. Very cool. All right. So it's um, the name of it comes from one. Uh, you know, it's, it's said that that black people are all born from kings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's also from my my. It, it's it's kind of weird. My grandfather, when he passed, uh -huh. um, the only thing I was able to take from him, uh, besides his name, hence George Von Doom, was was his hair uh, pomade, and his hair palm, his hair pomade was Royal Crown. So I kind of mixed that and some other things together, and I was like, I'm calling this album King Doom, and I'm that's dedicating it to him. Very cool title, though. I mean, that's that's a that's a very cool title. Oh, so, it's creating it's creating fuss. People are upset about it, but I couldn't care any less. There's no possible but, way for me to care. Okay, wait, wait. So it's creating fuss. People getting all then. 
it's better than having something that's kind of generic and like, oh yeah, that's a cute title to your album, Thanks. and nobody cares, you know, or it's not contra. I mean, sorry, but controversy sells. Like people have told me stuff like, well, what makes you qualified to call yourself king? Well, yeah, I. I mean, first of all, I'm grown, so I do what the hell I want. That's first okay, and foremost. Right, right. But other than that, I really don't owe anybody an explanation, but since we sitting here True with that. you right now, I, I decided to give a little insight on why the name King Doom is what it is. But no, I appreciate that. I mean, that's, that's the cool thing about three beers and a whiskey is just having that conversation. I, I, I hear that. I haven't seen the cover or don't know what that's like, although I heard some of you might be shooting some photo for the cover that's going to be... But Absolutely. I just see that as like not your mantra, like oh I'm King Doom. I just see that as like you said, the play on words, play Kingdom, on words, yeah. King Doom. I mean, yeah. that just seems like that's pretty badass creative shit. Yeah, I, I I love it, and there's no way that it, it can be changed. I mean, whoever feels negatively about it, they can feel negatively about it. I mean, haters gonna they, hate. They they spazzed on Nas about his album name, and they spazzed on Jay Z about his. Uh, Kingdom Come album not being as good as it should have been and they're going to spaz on whatever they want to but at the end of the day I'm a grown ass man and I'm going to do what I want to right you know what That's I'm saying true. So, yep. and, and there's not one of these people Ain't no, there's the people that are complaining aren't the people that are, that are that's buying my music or booking me for these shows so yeah so, then, then that's the rattling noise in the background that doesn't mean shit if the fans if somebody that I know you know, complains about the music, complains about the name that I know supports my music, then I'm more inclined to listen to what they're saying because I know that they're willing to spend their money on what I'm doing. Give weight to what they're talking about. But you're telling me that I can't call myself this and you ain't even never been to a show. In general, Just, what's the next time we can see Von Doom on stage in Austin? I'm planning on doing the album release. Even if the, oh, okay. it, it, may, it may be before, right before, right after the date, but I'm planning on doing the album release for the actual album. Mm -hmm. um, as far as any shows that are booked, the only ones that I'm booked for are out of town. And that okay. So let me put a plug for Von Doom. Um, you know, if if you're a fan of, of rap or hip hop, you know, it's it's a show you have to go see. You um, so it, uh Chris Calico. So back in January of this year, 2018, Von Doom got to get on the stage uh, with several other performers and it was Chris Calico headlining. And the the MC of the evening was also performing. I don't even remember what the hell his name was. He's got his own uh, band. Nima. Nima. Nima, yes. Yeah. And it was funny with all of the local acts that were on the bill. The one thing that that really blew my mind or impressed me was when Von Doom came off stage from his set, uh, and then Nima came back on to introduce. What was up next? I don't know. Um, he was like, oh my God, he was super excited about it. It was like, that wasn't just rap. That wasn't, that was like art. That was an art piece. Y'all got it. So, Thanks. and, and it, your stage performance really is like, you're not just getting up and doing your music, but you have this complete, sh you do it's a complete, production. It, it's complete. It's, 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 that's what I'll call it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so <laughs> I've, 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 I've been to several of your shows, and right. your opening is, is congratulations to you on this, your opening is different every single time you go to one of your shows. It's, um, it's a different intro, uh, and, and I'm telling all of you, I mean, if you, if you don't like rap or hip-hop, but you really can appreciate a good performance... Um, and a performance, performance piece, just go for that. It's just go for the performance. That, but see, it, that's the purpose. That's kind of the purpose why I do all of that anyway. Because one thing is, if you go to a performance, you go to a show, whatever time, I don't care what kind of show it is. It could be R and B. It could be blues, gospel, whatever. Right. Everybody that you're going to see is going to do the same thing. Everybody, if you go to a hip hop show, everybody's gonna rap. If you go to an R and B show, everybody's gonna do R and B. If you go to a folk folk music they're show, playing ukuleles. they're gonna see what I'm saying. So <laughs> ukuleles, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do whatever that is. So 
especially if you don't have thousands of fans, you have to do something to stand out away from everybody else. Mm -hmm. So people can say, hey, okay, well, I listen to him, but tell me something that that person did that made you remember that, that made you remember him. And they're going to say, well, he rapped. I don't care if you ask anybody who's ever seen me perform, they can say one thing that they'll always remember. And what they will always remember is that this big ass dude got up there and performed the whole They'll remember me getting pushed out into a wheelchair. <laughs> they'll, they'll remember me getting pushed out in a wheelchair. Right. They'll remember they'll remember me uh, but, uh, killing but, somebody on stage. Or, right. You know what I'm saying? Of Whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? They'll remember the performance. And that in itself will make it stick out. And they'll know next time, okay, I remember that guy. So let me I, stick around and see what the hell is going on. Right, I may or may not like what he does, but I like what he does. As far as Fresh. like, I want to see how this is opening up. This is so it is. It's some Big good Fresh. shit. Um, All for checking this shit live. Will Tompkins, from me and everybody here at Three Beers and a Whiskey. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, make sure if you uh, like what you saw, you hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like what you saw, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe and also click on the notification bell so that you won't miss future videos from Three Beers and a Whiskey. Thank you all very much.